Good morning, Second. Uh, we are continuing our study of the uh, book Believe, and uh, you'll see that uh, here, our book Believe, and we are in chapter number 29. And uh, we have one more to go, and uh, that topic is called self-control. But this one that we are in right now is uh, gentleness. And you can find those on our website, on the Facebook page, and uh, via email. You can email the church, and, um, and also the church emails those lesson outlines as, out as well. Um, we continue to uh, research and, and go through our study on uh, gentleness. And let your gentleness be evident to all. And I like to say just let that be something that's evident. Let it be unmistakable that you, uh, you let your gentleness be known to all. And as I was studying that, that lesson outline, I came across these seven habits of highly gentle people. You know the book, Stephen Covey, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Well, these are seven habits of highly, uh, highly uh, gentle people. There's nothing that shows your strength better than gentleness. I'll just go through two points on that. Just kind of whet your appetite to, to come on out and participate in Sunday school. Uh, be conscious of your feelings. So again, let your gentleness be evident, you know, to those, uh, to others. So we want to always be conscious of our feelings. And pretending will not make it disappear, won't happen, all right? It, it will just uh, push those feelings beneath the surface. The next one is uh, use the space between the stimulus and response. I like that one because I used to tell boys uh, that I mentor, you know, just take a pause, think, act, feel, you know, kind of thing. And that's what we're, we're after here. It's just to take a pause, that space between uh, what caused the reaction and your response. Um, gentle people aren't reactionary. Uh, they don't respond immediately, and they uh, stop to take a, a basically a, a metaphorically step back. And so that's what we want to do as being gentle people, all right, for Christ. To allow that, that Holy Spirit to just work in us when we encounter something or we, we encounter someone that's, uh, that's a problem. And so we just want to be able to take a step back. So we invite you out for the uh, Sunday School at 9.30 on Sunday, and uh, hope you will continue to join us uh, at that hour for Sunday School. Thank you. Good morning, Second Baptist. Uh, my name is Brother Ken Richardson, and I'm going to be your facilitator today. Um, we are in Chapter 29, uh, Part 5 of the Sunday School lesson. Um, we are talking about the fruit of gentleness. I'm so excited about this word, so let us go ahead and go straight into prayer. Gracious Father, we want to thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for the words, Father, that's going to be spoken. Father, may these words, O oh Heavenly Father, help us to develop this fruit called gentleness. Help us to be more kind, more loving, Father, and help us, O oh Heavenly Father, where we're weak and make us strong. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, I am so excited about this. If you don't know, we are in chapter 29, once I said uh, gentleness. Um, we know that we have our wonderful pastor, Pastor William J. Wine, Jr., uh, our facilitator and our leader here, along with his wonderful wife, Josie Wine, and as well as the Second Baptist family. If you are joining us for the first time, please join us every single week so that we can be blessed by you and you can bless us. Okay, so my brothers and sisters, this is the right time to really talk about this particular topic, which is gentleness. This is the right season for it. As you looked at the news, we are in a world that is full of contention, lies, racism, bullyism, greed, deception, and you know what, most of all, it's division. 
And God is saying something during this time. What is God teaching us during this season? That's the question that we all have to focus on, is what is God teaching us in this season? You know, you can feel free and comment and think about what it is that you're, uh, what God is teaching us. But I believe that God is trying to bring back a sense of order, not only in the church, but in this world, because it has been uh, in so much disorder for, a little, for this time that God had to slow us down, God had to weed some things out, God had to expose, and God wants to work out some things in us so that when the time and season comes, we can be gentle. So if gentleness is something that God is teaching, let us go ahead and define it. What is gentleness? Gentleness is defined, and I'm going to say it in the simplest terms, as the act or state of humility. In other words, you're going to come under the authority of another. What is that authority we're coming under? the Word of God. So let's look at the key idea because I believe that the key idea in this really lays out the principles of being gentle to others. The key idea says I am thoughtful, considerate, and calm in my dealings with others. Take a look at that. Thoughtful, considerate, and calm. You know gentleness is something that thinks of the need of a person, yet that's being thoughtful. When you're thoughtful, you are always thinking about what can I do to help this person? How can I help them out? And let's be honest, our thoughts are not always gentle or kind. So we have to put our thoughts sometimes um, to be subject under the Word of God, and that's where the humility comes in, and allow God to teach us you know, what is God trying to tell me? What is God trying to tell me? You know, Paul said something in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, where he says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save the sinners of whom I am chief. And see, Paul is one of the leaders in the New Testament who has wrote about one-third, two-thirds of the New Testament. And he called himself the chief of sinners. Where we would think of praising him, he put himself below. Wow, what a powerful thing. Can you have the fortitude of mind to bring yourself down, bring your thoughts down, to be able to help somebody else? Because I believe when your thoughts are too high, you're not able to go down low and help somebody else. So can I get an amen? The second thing is gentleness considers others by putting yourself in their shoes. Consideration is another principle of gentleness. You know, in Hebrews um, chapter 4, verse 15, um, as you go there, Christ became like us. It says that for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. See, Christ put himself in our shoes. We can never say that Christ did not understand what we went through. He was tempted in all points. And if we're honest, we have been tempted in many points. Maybe this doesn't tempt you, and maybe, you know, the apple doesn't tempt you, and the orange doesn't tempt you, but maybe the banana does. Maybe having the cake doesn't tempt you, but maybe the, the you know, eating out the too much chicken and getting too much grease tempts you. Whatever your temptation, you know, you can relate when other people have issues. So when you're being gentle, you are being uh, you are considering the other people by trying to put yourselves in their shoes. And lastly, gentleness is a calmness is about it. When you're gentle, you're unshaken by the emotions that people will admit. You know, in the book of James, you know, it gives the best example when it talks about be slow to anger, 
uh, quick to listen and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not create the righteousness of God. When you are calm, you are able to listen better. You know, many times when people come at you in a certain way, sometimes you're so quick to uh, let your thoughts run rapid and then your emotions get a hold of you. You know, sometimes you got to take a deep breath and allow your thoughts to subside so that you can listen. Because thoughts will cause calamity within your brain. Thoughts will cause confusion. So we need to calm ourselves down, allow ourselves to be able to be listening to other people when they speak. So we know that gentleness is thinking of other people considering and that we know that it's calm. And that's great. So how do we do this? Well, I think we need to look at the best example, which is Jesus. When you see Jesus, you see a strong, sincere servant, but compassionate in his serving. So let's go ahead and look into, you know, uh, the compassionate Savior here. The gentle Jesus, as we're going to call him. My point number A is Christ is the caring God. Let's look at Matthews 11, 28 through 30. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. Take the yoke I give you and put it on your shoulders and learn from me. Because he's gentle and humble and he'll find rest. The yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. Wow. What is Christ saying here? He is saying that, is, uh, that if you want to be gentle, you've got to be connected to me. Wow. Let's park right here just for a minute. Let's get the tendons out of that meat. Let's go ahead and pull what we need to pull from that. Because yoke means to be connection. And the connection is the key. When animals, you know, especially the yoke of oxen, were connected to each other, a lot of times you had to find two yokes of oxen that were of equal strength. And the reason being is because if you didn't have one of equal strength, one of them could have suffered the pain and agony of being either uh, hurt or it could have broken his neck because he's not able to sustain the same weight as the stronger yoke of oxen. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the padding and everything, it slipped and it caused pain with them. Sometimes, you know, it would get out of place and it would just hurt them. What Jesus is saying, that the connection is the key. When you're connected to Christ, Christ is the one that will bear the burden for you. And if the burdens that he places upon us, we're able to bear because anything that is too heavy for us, Christ will take up the slack. Connection. We've got to be connected to the source. You see, Lamps that are around and everything, unless it's connected to the power source, is not going to emit light. See, it, even though the light is there, you know, you've got to be connected or else it won't do anything. The tree will not grow unless it's just connected to its roots. The car won't start unless the battery is there. So we have got to be connected. And we know that being connected is not is the first step. If you're connected to Christ, Christ expects you, if you're in the lamp, you got to turn the switch on. Because the power is there when you're connected, but you got to turn the switch on, and then there's where the power comes. How do you be gentle? you got to be connected to the power source. So I want to ask you, what was your life like in 2020? Were you connected to the power source? Or were you disconnected? See, if you're connected to the power source, there's things that we do. We grow. We can learn. Christ said, and learn of me. You can't learn if you're not connected to the power source. We evolve. But see, 2020 in March, I believe people lost the connection. Our focus became on so many different things that were going on. We were all shocked. We were all surprised. And we can see by sometimes just by the numbers that the connection is not there. So frustrations you feel and the weariness 
and the experience and all of the other mishaps is because people have lost the connection. Wow. Someone may say that you're tired. Someone may say that I've lost my strength. Well, you know, if you're connected in uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, he says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like you. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When you're connected to the power source, you're able to be able to do that. Someone may say that I lost my job. I don't have money. I don't have these things. Well, see, if you're connected to the power source, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 19, it talks about that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. But you got to be connected. You know, someone might say that this is too much. I'm tired of this. I just want to go back. But I tell you, if you're connected to the power source, you will know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13, that God is not going to put more on you to can bear because with every temptation, he's going to make you be able to bear what you have. So we have to be connected to the power source because the power source is the one that's going to give us the strength to be gentle with others. My, 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 my. You know, many of us want to go back to what it was like before. But I'm here to tell you today, saints, that God said, I'm not going back to the old. I'm doing a new thing. You know, there was a group of people called the children of Israel. The children of Israel said the same thing. 400 years of bondage, uh, being under a fierce leader, and when God gives them opportunity to be able to get out, what do they do in the wilderness? They moan. They complain. They talk about, you know, they want to go back to what was before. God gave them everything what it, what, that they needed, but they wanted to keep going back. Why? No connection. They were not connected to the power source so that everything that they saw, they, they did from everything that they had learned before. They were not connected. They were the lab, but they weren't plugged in. I encourage you not to lose your connection. Because the connection is the part that's going to help and save us. Point number A was that Christ is the caring God. My point number B is that Christ is the gentle God. He's gentle. See, it says, as holy as the God of the Old Testament was, he was compassionate. Um, it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed in Lamenta Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, because his compassions fail not. Guess what? They're new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. See, when you want to be gentle, you have to be connected to the one whose compassions fail now. When it comes to us, we like to bask in the glory that God forgives us and does all these things. Well, see, that same brand of attitude needs to be connected to other people. What God gives you, he does not give you just for you. He gives you this so that you can be connected to the power source and you can connect somebody else. Have you started your day with a brand new attitude towards others? towards someone who may have hurt you, embarrassed you, or did wrong to you? Or have you lost your connection? Have you lost the connection to be gentle and compassionate with other people, and God gave you full of mercy every single day? That's the question I have to ask myself and that everybody has to ask themselves. You see, Christ wants us to exude this thing called gentleness, especially during this time. Christ is preparing us for this because I think what he is going to bring us into is going to allow us opportunity to be gentle to others. Right now we're a divided nation. God wants us to be a united nation. And when we become united, God has prepared our minds, just like he prepared the children of Israel. He was feeding them with the manna from heaven. He was giving them everything they needed to be prepared to walk into a land that was flowing with milk and honey. Oh, those saints, I believe God is trying to get us to a point where it's going to be a land flowing again with milk and honey. But guess what? we got to be connected to the power source. we got to allow God to do what he's going to do within us 
so that then we, we can learn how to, as God uh, brings us to this next level of, of glory, to be gentle to others. He doesn't want us to take what we've been doing and what we see now into what God is going to do. We've got to learn how to be the gentle Christian. Amen. So the next point is that Christ is the forgiving God. After all that they did to him, Luke chapter 23, 24 says, And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. Christ did not give that situation permission to live out what he taught. Are you giving things permission to live out what you think? Or are you allowing yourselves to forgive others for the wrongs that they've done against you? They beat them. They whipped them. Forty stripes. They took chunks out of the skin and pulled them off. They hung him high, as we say. They stretched him wide. You know, we, we know all these little words and everything, but have you taken it to heart? Because in order to be gentle, sometimes you're going to have to forgive those who have done wrong against you. Don't build a case for someone that doesn't deserve your forgiveness. Build a case and do what Christ gives us, uh, which is what we don't deserve. Build a case on build, giving somebody what they don't deserve. And I know sometimes it's hard. And I know we betray each other. And I know that, you know, sometimes things are heavier and deeper and everything. But if you want to learn to be gentle, one of the things that you have to do is forgive. And the way you do that is you stay connected to the power source. You know, my final point as I get into this here is that God also was the patient God. If you want to be gentle, you have to learn how to be patient. You know, in this example where we see that Peter uh, spoke with Jesus as he was about to be crucified, and he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice, three times deny that thou knowest me. <laughs> you know, have you ever had somebody promise you the moon? And you knew they weren't going to deliver. Somebody coming to you asking you for 20 bucks and talking about, man, man, you give me this 20 bucks, man, I'm going to give you 30 bucks. And you know that you're going to get it, so you just have to give it anyways. See, I give things, you know, not necessarily expecting it back, but if this comes back, you know, God bless them. See, sometimes you have to do that thing. You know, sometimes your kids will say something, Daddy, I'll clean the room, or I'll do this, and I'll make sure to get this right if you allow me to do these things. And you know in your mind that they're not going to fulfill their end of the promise. you got to learn how to be patient. It's a process to get people connected like you're connected. If you're connected to the power source, you will be able to recognize that that person needs some time to grow. Christ knew that Peter needed this time to grow. He knew that the experience that Peter experienced and the anguish and the shame that he was going to feel was going to make him more connected. <laughs> I saw on the TV about the Powerball. I know some people were talking about some, you know, that they're going, you know, just, just Lord, let me hit this number. And, you know, I, I give you $100,000. <laughs> they get $4 billion, but I'm going to give you 100000 and see, that's the way we are with our tithes and offerings. Sometimes, you know, we tell God we're going to get this and we're going to do that. And then when we get the thing, you know, we don't give what it is that we say we're going to do. Christ knows that. Christ knew when we had that stimulus check and we got that, that not everybody was going to get 10% of that. So if God can't trust you with the small, he can't trust you with the little. But God is patient. God already knew it. And he knows that when you feel the anguish and shame sometimes, You'll come back. The most powerful statement that God said in the scripture is when he came back and Peter heard about it, Peter was so ashamed. But God told him, go tell the disciples and Peter. That's a word for somebody today. Go tell the disciples and, and you fill in the blank. Because sometimes, you know, our decisions that we made that time, we feel so ashamed about. But God, I'm trying to tell you right now, 
that you don't have to feel ashamed because God is a patient God. He's, he, he is the fruit of gentleness. We're learning it. And this process of this pandemic is helping us to learn what patience is all about. I know that we're impatient. I know that this is a tough thing, but I'm encouraging everybody, learn something through this. This is our wilderness. This is our modern day wilderness right now where God is trying to teach us something and I want to learn it. So how do you learn it? You stay yoked, connected with the power source. The power source will give you everything that you need. It will fill you with the knowledge. It will give you the experiences so that when God gets us to the man that's flowing with milk and honey, we will understand that what he taught us during this time will help us at that time. We need to learn how to be gentle with others, with our friends, and sometimes we have to learn to be gentle with ourselves. There are the principles as I close here. Be caring, be compassionate, be forgiven, be patient, but most of all, what I would encourage each one of you to do is to be connected. I want to thank you for my time. I thank you for allowing me to speak this word to you. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. I'd like to again encourage you to uh, study with us. And out of the Believe edition, we are talking about gentleness. And a closing prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to study your word. We hope that something is said and done that will reflect gentleness with us. We ask these things again in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.